you very much. I'd like to thank the gentleman for it, uh, yielding. And let me just say, first, as a member of both the Appropriations and the Budget Committee, I rise in strong opposition to this rule. The allocations provided under this rule will savage vital programs that protect the public health and safety, promote and develop our workforce and educate the next generation of Americans. Sequester cuts are already hitting low-income families throughout our country, also in my congressional district, in my home state of California, and every single household in America, especially the millions of Americans who are struggling still to find a job. These cuts are hitting them disproportionately. Our economy cannot afford these cuts. Hungry children do not deserve these cuts. Students who depend on Pell Grants, TRIO, and Head Start do not deserve these cuts. And certainly our seniors and our veterans do not deserve these cuts. The Military Construction Veterans Bill on the floor this week assumes the sequester cuts have been replaced. Why in the world can't we do this for the other bills as well? We all know that the allocation for the rest of the subcommittees will make it nearly impossible to fund education, senior programs, infrastructure, and job creation. While all of us believe it's important to keep the government functioning, governing by continuing resolution is really no way to run the federal government, and that's exactly what course we're on unless we come to some agreement. The majority complain, excuse me, they claim that they uh, care about the middle class and the poor, Yet these cuts really do begin to erode the middle class and force more people into poverty. So it's time for Congress to reject these draconian cuts and replace the sequester with a bipartisan agreement on the budget resolution to create jobs and to lift the economy for all. Enough is enough, Mr. Speaker. We need to vote no on the rule, and we need to go back to the drawing board. Gentleman from Florida.